Mm. Well, does the chicken really need sunglasses? You know, this chicken is so freaking cool. It that is, is a cool chicken. It is neat. Though. I'll tell you one thing. Oh, here we go. <laughs> quack, quack. Good Friday morning, guys. My name is The Deviled Egg, and thank you kindly for joining us with Real Talk uh, with Keith Smith. Today's program does not feature Keith Smith. Today's program does not feature Jerry Miller. Instead, today's program features The Deviled Egg and Judah Wickhauer, The Chicken. So I'm going to ask the age-old adage to you, the viewer and listener. What came first, the chicken or the egg? Oh, look at this. Look what you got. The egg. This is, this is, I, this this is, is my lunch. This is my brother. <laughs> this is my brother here. This hard-boiled egg. And I'm not just uh, uh, an egg, ladies and gentlemen, but I am a deviled egg. You've got Can we go to the studio camera? Judah Wickhauer, you're going to have to get a horizontal picture, a picture of us in front of the Real Talk with Keith Smith branding. Um, and Judah is a chicken over there. And leave the camera on and you join us. Behind All the right. camera. Let's go to the studio camera there, J-Dubs. Viewers and listeners, like and share the show. And if you want some ammunition to go after yours truly, I think, I think the meme accounts are going to be utilizing this. Um, All right, you got the wings. This. And... There's a tail. Yeah, there we tail go. Faster. Does the devil egg go in the middle? You're going in the middle. Okay, going right, in the I'm middle. going in the middle. Uh, I literally a deviled egg with just boxer briefs on and nothing else on underneath. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. Let's not uh, knock down the televisions behind us. Viewers and listeners, we love you. Uh, the Real Talk with Keith Smith cast here on a Friday just after Thanksgiving. Happy Halloween. Thanks, Jim. And what came That's first? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Uh, Halloween. Halloween. I said Halloween, yeah. <laughs> okay. What came first, the chicken or the egg? I don't know. We're going to debate the that. devil egg. But I think, I think, I you have know, very, shake our Yeah, shake our <laughs> I have very limited <laughs> neck mobility here. Like, I have to turn my head like right. this. Sunglasses some coming off. All yeah. right, ladies and gentlemen, spread the gospel that is real talk with Keith Smith as the devil egg no, tries yeah. to get his uh, devil's tail in order before sitting down. <laughs> It's a, it, it, I'm it, damn near close to the full Monty under this deviled egg. Thanks for sharing. Genuinely. So, nothing planned for today other than what came first, the chicken or the egg? This is real estate? Bill McChesney, welcome to the program. Many so, agents watching the program. Let's see how many listings Keith Smith picks up today. Yeah. <laughs> or should I say the uh, fine feathered chicken over there? Yeah, yeah. Well, I will tell you, I was hoping that the chicken outfit would be a little less warm under these lights than the Batman outfit. Wrong. Yeah, yeah. I would, I would imagine that's. I mean, the, the Batman outfit is spandex. The Batman. The chicken is, outfit looks like. Is it? Is it velvet? Is it some kind of mesh velvet? You know, I actually think they call these pajamas. Who knows? Oh, pajamas. The uh, fine folks at Tipsy Elves. Thank you for the costume. Tipsy, look at this. I'm sweating already. I, 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 when I put my hand on your shoulder over there, I noticed that you had drenched through your shoulder feathers hey, there. Hey, 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 this is a family show. You drenched through your shoulder feathers. <laughs> shoulder feathers. Yeah. <laughs> But, uh, and I have a hard-boiled egg here. The deviled egg has a brother. Has a brother, and he's holding his brother in his hand. But it could be a sister, it's, though. It could be a sister. You, you never know. Could be a sister. But we just wanted to have a little fun Not today. Not that there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> okay, Seinfeld. <laughs> so those who are watching, when you have an opportunity, Google. Um, it's the the group is called the Fools. They had a hit in 1980 called Psycho Chicken. Psycho killer. No, it was a psycho chicken. Oh, a psycho and, chicken. And I was on a bike ride listening to my 80s Pandora, and this song ran through my hearing aids. And then I said, that's what we're going to do. We're going to be a chicken and an egg and talk a little bit about housing and what comes first. Well, what comes first? Housing and development and density or infrastructure? Neil Williamson, a question for you. Ned Galloway, a question for you. Uh, Lloyd Snook and Brian Pinkston and Juan Diego Wade, questions for you. Housing or infrastructure, schools and roads and water, or housing affordability, or supply, or quality of life. Or do we go ahead and grow the 5%? Studio camera. See, I, I'm not convinced we go to the 5%. Studio camera, Judah Wickhauer. I've got to make sure that I pull down my boxer briefs here. They might see something. Uh... Hey, I do this for you, Keith. I, I know I'm actually that. messing my hair up for you. I, I know that. I, that was the for the viewers and listeners. The first thing, because these guys did not know this was a reveal of I what the. I found out about this at 10:03 this morning. 
And what was the first thing that came out of My first Jerry? thing that I said is this going to mess up my hair. Kevin Yancey says we need to be down at the cock block uh, on Route 29. <laughs> the cock block is yeah. the, uh, the yeah. home to what? Uh, yeah. No, I'm not. Raising gonna, canes, yeah, I'm, Popeyes. I'm not going to do that. I might get sliced and fried and served as... Uh, as some sort of chicken McNuggets or whatever they they are serving. Chicken over there. McNuggets. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's a, you know, I, I, if I make up some new words today, it's going to be a. Travis Hackworth and Nicholas Irby giving us some props. Hey Vanessa guys. Marco giving us some props. Share the show. What came first, the chicken or the egg? When I when the egg has to turn his head, he has to turn his head like this. Because if he just turns his head normally like this, this is what happens. This <laughs> might have. This is slightly more visibility than Robin though. Uh, yeah, so you know, I was trying slightly to, more visibility, uh, than Rob. you know, but but um, not as uh, conducent to your hair. Kevin Sullivan, Rob Neal, welcome to the program. Todd Powell, thank you for watching. Bobby Yarborough, hello. Mr. DL, hello. Chris so, Stellan, Lake Monticello, hello. Andre Xavier, Jason Howard, happy Halloween to all and to all a hallowed night. It's all downhill to Christmas from here. It's all downhill to Christmas, right? Uh, but, you know, the, the, the question is asked, and we'll ask the viewers and the listeners for their opinion. What comes first? Does development come first, right? Does infrastructure? infrastructure. Yeah. We don't want children learning in trailers. I, I, I get that. We don't want water issues. We don't want traffic issues. But we don't want fiber and internet issues. We want quality of life. Unfortunately, did you see the story? It was terribly unfortunate. Uh... By Stony Point Road, yeah. there was a family that was struck by a vehicle, yeah. an infant passed. Yeah. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, it's time we prioritize infrastructure over housing. But how do we do that? Well, how mean, do we do that, Mr. Egg? Uh, how we Mr. Do, Deviled Egg. How we, do, how we do that is we consider where the growth patterns of education in schools are. I got it, but how do you pay for it? How, what do you mean? How so let's you talk for? about water for a second. Sure. On, on that. So let, I mean, let, water's been a hot topic in Orange County and Green, and in Green County on, and Crozet. Let's let's focus and, on on Green for the sake of sake of of the of the discussion. And this is where he's going to talk about proffers and the contri contribution well, to proffer, water infrastructure from developers. But proffers are not allowed. Okay. Right. They the the the, the legislation is, is that the term proffer doesn't exist any longer. Okay. Right. Uh, well, that's an important clarification because it used to be that the jurisdictions could force or, you know, in interdict uh, uh, proffers into it. But what, what happens here, this is the reason. What was that word? I have no idea. I'm making it worse. <laughs> What's that word? I'm making it worse. 1,100,000. Eleven, yeah. <laughs> uh, but the question becomes what comes first, what comes second? So right now, let's talk about uh, Greene County because this is a real world scenario, right? Um, you have. DEQ, yeah, which has basically, uh, basically has this. It's called a consent order. They have issued an, an order to Green County to say fix your water system or else. Or else, who who really knows what the or else is? Okay, but they have to come up with a plan, and this is what they're working on. Then they have to figure out how to pay for that plan, right? How to pay for that water infrastructure plan, and you know. The way that it's typically done, and this is the chicken and egg where we have to get together and actually work together, is generally what happens is developers pay for that, right? So they pay for it in connection fees. So if they raise their connection fee up to $15,000. Uh -huh. I'm with you. And let's say we know based on the four big players that are out there, they're going to be producing between two hundred and two hundred and fifty thousand, two hundred to 250 residential units. So each one of those co connections on the water side is going to be times 15,000. Okay, I'm with you. Right, so if somebody does the math on that, it's three, four million bucks, whatever it is. There's roughly 2,000 units that are about Devil ready, or devil eggs about ready to get built on it. So how, it, how the infrastructure expenses are recovered are through connection fees. But the problem you have is the jurisdiction maybe don't have the ability to do it with capital or resources. So that's where there's negotiations happen between the developers and the builders so they can build the infrastructure and then get discounts from their connection. Kevin Yancey watching the program. He says Lake Monticello is the poster child of putting the cart before the horse when it comes to development over infrastructure, Keith Smith. Yeah. He, he used to live in Lake Monticello. I, 
Uh, he used to live, and I know Lake Monticello water uh, system intimately well and sewer system intimately well, flush, flush. <laughs> <laughs> but what happened with that was, was the opposite. The, the Lake Monticello Owners Association built a system that was inadequate, never had the resources. It's almost a prime example of what I just talked about with Greene County. Never had the resources to do it. I know this firsthand because I was developing the acres in 97, and DEQ refused me to connect because sewer pump stations were dumping nasties into the lake. Nasties? What are Nasty. nasties? It's the Logan Walls Claylow, what's a nasty? It's the opposite of what... Travis Hackworth, what's a nasty into the lake? <laughs> it would be Does the deviled egg need to be devilish and figure that out? I got it, my brother in my hand, might be my sister. It would be, it, it would, or you could be your mother or your father. No, couldn't. How could it be my mother or my <laughs> father? If, I, I would the, be. <laughs> yes, you would be the mother or the father. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah You're yeah. the chicken. I am the chicken. But look, you what's know. What's the, the nasty? The um, uh, sewage. Okay, sewage. Okay, I'm with you. All right, just want to clear up. It was sewage, was. and uh, Lake Monticello was within 30 days of having its plant shut down that it couldn't do it. Goodness gracious. And it sold it to a company called... We all know this. Tell us the history. This uh, is a good one. Yeah, sold it to a company called Aqua Source, which was a... Enron Company. John Blair, welcome to the broadcast. It was an Enron Company. That's not what you want to do. And it went bankrupt, and then Aqua Virginia bought it Stephanie out. Stephanie Rhodes calls them the leftover candy bars, the nasties. The nasty over can, can, the, the candy bars that... She used to live in Lake Monticello. The, so did her family. The cast, the, the cast, the, 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 the candy bars that have gone through the system there you go okay those are the nasties and then the enron company go ahead yeah so then aqua virginia bought the enron co company at, at at a bankruptcy sale um committed to 20 million dollars worth of improvements but here was the catch that not a lot of people don't talk about when lake monticello sold it to the enron company they wrote in the deal that uh rates couldn't be increased i believe it was 15 years right and so the Aqua Virginia had to pay for all the improvements, and guess what? Now we're catching up with it. Now you're, now you have the leftover candy bars. Now you got the leftover. The baby candy. roofs, Kevin Yancey said. The baby roofs. Yeah. The hundred grand. What, mo what, mo said. what movie was that? Uh, Caddyshack, right? Oh, I there love Caddyshack. Scene in Caddyshack. Caddyshack's my favorite. Yeah. Chevy so Chase, one of the best actors there is. Christmas no. Vacation is a. No. Are you throwing shade no. on Chevy no. Chase? No. Look. Best actors? I said one of one of the best actors. Yeah, 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 yeah. You don't think Chevy Chase is one of the best actors? I think for what he does, he's one of the best actors. What, Chevy Chase, during his time on the silver screen, was one of the most iconic actors of his generation. Paid. Yeah. But that's got nothing to do with... Best actors can be defined a number of ways. Yeah, I know that, but maybe my def this chicken's definition. Caddyshack and Christmas Vacation yeah. have withstood the yeah. test of time. It was with the, so was, so was Casablanca. I, but <laughs> I mean, they're very different films. There, uh, they are. They are. They are. Yeah. So um, you know, look, I, I, I want to just have a little bit of fun. So hopefully, somebody can chime in with a question. We'll do stump the chicken. Stump the chicken. And uh, I'm doing another 100 kilometer bike ride tomorrow for raise money for uh, suicide prevention for monks vets. We lose 22 a day. So if you know a vet, say hey. And um, what I'm doing is I'm sweating about two pounds off of this. So I'll be at the right weight when I go on the bike tomorrow. To Scott run. Aaronworth in Virginia Beach. Welcome to the program. A talented Esquire, Scott Aaronworth, Esquire. a diehard Virginia fan. Yeah. Yes. Vanessa Parkhill in, in Earliesville giving you some props. Thank you. Uh, Kevin Nancy says, for the record, I did not live at the lake. I lived in Troy. I would not live at the lake if you gave me the property. Man, Yancey, you're throwing shade at the, the most dense neighborhood in central Virginia with what, 4,300, 4,500 homes? Uh, 4,500 lots, roughly 4,400 homes. 4,500 lots and 4,400 rooftops. Kevin yeah, Nancy, yeah, them yeah. fighting well, words. Well, you Kevin. know the joke why they got, why I, they got gates, right? I've told this joke so many times. Did I really? Yes. Okay. It's to know. keep the damn Yankees inside. And okay. you, my friend, are one of those damn Yankees. I am one of those damn Yankees. Yeah. But look, look uh, you know, you either like Lake Monticello or not, but, you know, for the price point that you have at this particular point for 350 with central water and sewer, it's got a golf course. It's got a lake. How's Lake Monticello doing uh, inventory-wise, movement-wise, for uh, things it, selling? It's, it's, I haven't looked at it in a while, but it's up, right? We're probably in the 30s. I had some commentary on the I Love Seville show earlier this week that asked this question. 
Why has much of the real estate market and the car footprint slowed almost to a snail's pace? Price cuts, price modifications, price adjustments, price changes, price decreases, however you want to brand them, are happening left and right. I saw, and I highlighted this in my commentary earlier in the week, one of the boutique agents, boutique agencies, boutique firms that arguably does the most amount of volume and sales volume per head is now sending marketing material out to anyone who subscribes in the subject line of the email, this listing as a 3% buyer's commission. I have not seen the marketing in the subject line of an e-newsletter of email of marketing collateral, the promotion of 3% buyer's commission in some time. Yeah, so when's the last time you've seen that? Well, you never because it was never required. You didn't need to do it because it was buried into the You saw that in 28, 2008, 2009, 2010. Yes, you saw many homes where the promotion oh, yeah, that yeah, were off yeah, 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 sometimes yeah, yeah, yeah. even 4% buyers commission during that time. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was an incentive to go ahead and go ahead go ahead and, and do whatever it took. Yeah. Look, um <clears throat> and then I got to talk to you about that house in Belmont that we were talking about. Yeah. Which one do you want me to tackle? Which one this no, chicken to tackle uh, first? First, you need to talk about what's going on with the market. Yeah, so um, we've talked about this last Friday. The, as Dr. Lisa Sterevent has said. Kate the, Lucas, I'm a deviled egg. The, she's asking you. Which yeah. <laughs> can you go to the studio camera so she yeah. can see what we are again, Judith? Studio camera, Keith Smith, come on over. I'm almost in the full Monty here. Well, then keep your... Not that ending wrong. Uh, devil, <laughs> deviled egg right here. All right. Deviled egg. What came first? This or this? This is the deviled egg. What came first? The, chicken or the egg? The deviled egg. Okay. The deviled I egg. Disagree. Don't, don't forget your tail. Oh, yeah, my tail. I shake my tail feathers. Yeah. Here we go. Um, are you going to offer some commentary on what happened? I am, but if you... you, 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 you. Oh, Jesus. I was fell down. What your phones? Are, are you doing a talk show right now? I am. What? Doing a talk show, trying to negotiate a deal while I'm doing it. This What's going on with the market there? Yeah. So, as Dr. Lisa Sturman has said, we mm. talked about this before. It's just plain weird. It is just plain weird. You know. You know. You, and I can't. And I can't. Um, anybody could tell you, and look you dead in the devil face, devil's egg thing and say they exactly know what's going on is probably just guessing. Okay. At the end of the day, it could be the election. It's just everybody. Rates now over 7%. Absolutely. Well, we talked about that was going to happen. We said they were baked in. We didn't uh, see an increase or a hike like this, though. Uh, we saw, I, I thought there was going to be, but not to, to this level. No, I, I, mean, think it, I think it's going to get worse. We're talking like a hike that's... Damn near flirting with a point. As long as Since that, as long as Powell that, made that cut, as long as that ten-year T bill starts climbing, you're going to see the H rates rates climb. I look more like a sunny side egg, evidently. It looked it looked more like a. Flip, flip, flip. <laughs> I'm not even sure how to respond to that. <laughs> yeah, but, I was told at 10:03 this morning, 12 minutes before this program, to put this costume on, and, and, I, and I did, and I said, "Is it going to mess up my hair?" He said, yes. And I said, okay. I said, suck it up, buttercup. I said, okay. <laughs> then he poured me some Irish whiskey, which poured you some Irish helped help, help, help with the scenario. Uh, Keith? It's you, just, I, I, we get this question asked all the time in the last couple of weeks. You What's got rates on? over 7%. It, yeah. And as long as that T-bill is climbing, rates are going to climb up, right? And who knows, right? All this stuff is baked in. But I don't know if people are waiting for the election to get over. You know, uh, I, 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 I don't have an answer. Which is kind of rare for me. Usually, I can come up with something. Usually, you do. Uh, but to honestly look at this, I don't know. Now, if you take a look, and we we showed some charts some weeks ago over the shows, you can see this November, December is usually low. I actually had a chart showing where January, February, March, after elections, there's a usual usually a steeper climb. Yeah. So I think you're going to see the market pick back up a little bit. Also. The, the things have changed a little bit, right? The, the, you know, it used to be uh, six, this is 751. When we started the show, 700 shows ago, six plus 751 years. 751 shows I've sat across from you for at least an hour? Good Lord. And over six years ago, 
the com- I remember this as, as it was yesterday. Love you, Roger Voisinet. We, hey, Roger. We were, Roger, I was, uh, actually talked about you at a land trust meeting yesterday. I'll call you later on today. Uh, let's see. You talked about his development down Market Street in the Woolen Mills neighborhood where he's got one house and he's going to try to build, what is it, three additional ones on the lot? The, the project has tremendous upside of potential. But it has and slowed stuck. and stalled because of personnel issues at the city, so I'm causing gonna, a log jam of development execution. I, you literally used the, uh, my cousin Vinny quote. The deviled egg did? No. Do you ever get stuck in the red mud with the car and, you're really, and, it, and it gets stuck in the red mud and the reel just spins? A lot of people don't know this about me. I don't like to get dirty. I, I, we've never had that conversation, but that, that does surprise me. Do not like to get dirty. Have you seen my shoes, my, the shoes I'm wearing yes, over there? Yes, I saw them. What color are those shoes? White. And about, do you see a speck on them? I do not see a speck on them. Kevin Yancey wants to talk I about the butter show. You've got a lot of realtors wanting suspect, us to focus on the topic at hand. I would suspect, oh, right, okay, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I would suspect that if I know you at all, you have a closet with about a half a dozen white sneakers and you rotate them out from... I have a handful. I have a handful. Of I, very, would ima- yeah. I would imagine. I that, very that, much that, do. That's what you would do. So what were we talking about? We were talking about why inventory is not moving. Got the it. fact that interest rates are well over 7%. Yeah. The fact that this presidential election that is happening on Tuesday is breeding a sense of uncertainty. But if not up. fear in the market. We're seeing price cuts, modifications, but, changes in adjust- adjustments at a rapid pace. And we see an extremely pro- reputable agent at an extremely reputable firm using in the subject line of e-newsletters that we are offering 3% buyer's commissions. Bring your clients. Yeah. So I think if you read the rest of that email, it goes back to we are pros and this is what we're worth. No. Right? Oh, well, then I, I mean, think, they are pros. I, I'm looking at a different email. Then they are pros. Point. They were doing this to bring as many clients as possible to the listing. Sure. Yeah. I, I, I got it. So I'm looking at what's sold in the, just to figure out what the days on markets are. I'm taking a look at what has sold in the last seven days in the car footprint. We're doing the chickens doing this live. So the, so the average days on market, so there was 88 homes that actually closed in the last seven days, car footprint. There was, uh, uh, thir- the average days on market was 35, the median was 13. And what I was trying to get to, because now the chicken remembers, um, uh, maybe I should wear this more often. Oh, yeah, I think you my, absolutely should. My ADD should. Will, will get a little, you little bit better. You absolutely should. A little bit better. And when you go get coffee at Lone Light before the show, you should have worn the chicken costume. Yeah, well, I'm a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> I would have worn the deviled egg costume. I know that, because I'm a chicken. Uh, but the when we started the show six plus years ago, the, the norm was when buyers and seller markets started shifting was somewhere mm-hmm. between 60 to 90. I'm telling you, we are now somewhere in the 30 to 45 days. That's what, it is now a whole new dynamic, which the 60 to 90 day rule, for lack of a better term, I've been in this business since 87. It's always kind of was the rule, right? And is now getting looked at. So it's 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 extremely strange. You're getting so. By the way, the 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 median of these 58 transactions in all the six jurisdictions that we're sitting in right now, the median sales price yeah is over half a million bucks. Dang. The median sales price is five zero five two one seven. Right. Okay. That that's 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 insane. Six years ago, that number was probably half that. All right, so here's a very pointed question for you. Will we see this market change once the election is behind us? I think a lot of people think it will. And you're saying it will not? I'm saying don't be surprised if it don't. Okay, then uh, the follow-up question to that I would think, be, I think, I think, is the market in a rut? No, the market, the market in 40 years... There's always different markets, the different market dynamic, 37 years, different market dynamics. We are in a different market dynamic okay. right now. And the difference between you know, where the market is now in the unicorn years, where if it had four walls and a roof and you had a pulse, I'm with you. you could sell it. You've got to really understand the market. I had, a, I had a, another 
not one of our agents, but I had another agent call me wanting to walk through the six rights that you and I talk about all the time because they didn't quite understand them. Okay. And I wanted to walk them. And through. then you say, listen to Real Talk with Keith Smith online at realtalkwithkeithsmith.com. Yeah, yeah, Click yeah, the partners yeah. or, tab. No, that's not what I said, but okay. I won't say what I said because, but, but you know, it's location, price, features, condition, timing, and, and who's on the other side matters. Um, I call a lot of stuff for the other side matters comment for a, while, for a long time. Now I'm, people are not so much giving me a hard time about, about, about that. Stephanie we, said she raised her kids in Lake Monticello, wouldn't change a single thing about it. Yeah, we, we've been there since 1987. I love it. We're in the acres, which is a little bit different, but we raised our children uh, for the first 13 years on Laguna, right by Beach 3. Um, it was a different world at that time. I, uh, of the 600 homes that I built there, I mostly built at Lake Monticello. And I didn't have to travel more than five minutes to a job. And at the end of the day, I went in the summer, I went swimming at the beach with my kids. I hope you had your clothes on. Oh. <laughs> That's why we were asked not to come back. Uh, now I get it. Um, yeah, so it, it, it's great. We, we, we love it. Uh, we love being in there, but we're in, we're in a little bit of a different neighborhood within, within the neighborhood. Back to the question. I think if, look, all of a sudden on Wednesday, regardless of who gets elected, and even if we know on Wednesday, but if on Wednesday we get elected, if everybody thinks the real estate market is going to go back to the unicorn years, so there's two things. The real estate market is not going to go back to the unicorn years. There's two things that are not going to happen. Yeah. Unicorn years in the time of great unpleasantness. Amy Weidel, I'm a deviled egg. He's the chicken. Oh, she oh, loves, Amy, the, she Amy, loves the costumes. Amy, Amy uh, is my daughter's mother-in-law. I'm, I, I'm damn near close to buck naked under this thing. And we had a great time yesterday. Your and, daughter's mother-in-law, okay. Right. Um, just to put it in perspective, I brought my mom and dad there. So my mom, my, you know, my Yona was away, but myself. Pop. My mom, Pop. What did, what did Pop go as? Pop. Okay. Pop is Pop. Okay. <laughs> um, Amy, her husband, Chris. Oh. So little baby Ravenna, just mm. think about this, had a great grandparents and both set of her grandparents. Is she the only grandchild on her father's side? Yeah. Oh. You I'm should gonna, know that. Yes. You I should know, know that. that. Yeah. I, I should mean, know that. Amy, Amy's watching Amy's right now. Amy's going to, oh boy. Amy. You should know that. <laughs> I'm going to I'm gonna go with yes. That. Unless it's wrong, then I'll go with no. <laughs> maybe yes, maybe no. Maybe yes, yes maybe, maybe no, no yes. yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. On yes, on for Chris and Amy, this is their first grandchild. Okay, you should know that. Yeah, I, I knew that. I yeah. knew that. Okay, got it. Yeah, got it. Okay, but we had a lot of fun. It was so, great. And you went trick or treating in the West Side of Richmond. Well, we went, it was awesome. Had a lot of fun. What was the West Side of Richmond trick or treating like? Unbelievably packed. Unbelievably packed. Unbelievably with packed. families. Unbelievable. There was house after house after house after house after house. It reminded me when I was a kid. Well, because they're set up in close proximity to each they're other. Set up, and, and, and the neighborhood has a lot of young people in it, little kids in it. So uh -huh. it just was really, really cool. Um, my neighborhood has a little bit more retirees, older people. So you're saying a lot of lights turned off, not much candy, and as a result, no, toilet, I don't toilet know about papers that. hitting the trees, the houses, and the cars. I don't know about that. There was a lot of candy. I think, I think these families in my neighborhood are going to be eating a lot of candy for, for, for a while. But we had a lot of fun. Um, I, uh, I put on this outfit. Okay. And baby Ravenna, I'm not really sure. Was terrifying? Uh, she's usually terrified. You kept her up? She's kind of tired. Rena Hawkshaw, welcome to the program. Yeah. Thank you for watching the program. So, look, the... the, the We've been talking about this for a while. This is when you have to get a pro chicken and a pro devil egg to show up and help you navigate the market. It is not that simple anymore. There you go. You got it. You should draw a face on that. So they got. Sure, so can you draw a face on this? Here you go. This has got a. This mm, has got a. Uh, is very good with. I, I don't. Oh yeah, you don't trust. You toss your, it to Judah. Toss it to Judah. You don't. You Give don't. me a good face on this, okay? There's the egg. Judah's got great hands. Over there, throw it over there. He catches things well. Oh, look, oh, at, look that. at that! Huh? Give, give me a nice something that can show up on camera when I hold it up, if you could. You're very talented, Savannah. But let's put that Savannah College of Art and Design uh, <laughs> degree to use here. Any particular okay. kind of face? Draw a smiley See, face have, on an I egg. I don't have any excuse, right? You guys are educated. I have no. I, ha I don't have. You got a degree. Yeah, you I don't have artistic talent. 
Savannah College of Art. What do you want? I got kicked out of high school. He's asking me what to put on there. A face. A face. Okay. <laughs> I mean, a, a happy face. I get a sad this face, question a scary all the face. A devil egg. You know what I would put on? Oh, a devil egg. Hold on. I want to lean over. Devil face. I want to lean over. Do that. Yeah. <laughs> a deviled egg face on that hard boiled egg, which will be my lunch later today. The no, Juan Sarmiento, awesome, I've got awesome an, costumes. Juan Sarmiento says we like, need to eat more chicken. Eat more chicken. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I got, yeah. He still owes you a martini, Sarmiento. Yeah, I still owe you a martini. Thank you. Thank you. I got wings, though. I got wings. Does, you, chi does chickens fly? Chickens don't fly, right? Chickens kind of float. They jump, they, don't they? They, or whatever. they flutter. They can fly. It, Chicken's not flood? far. They not, flutter. Not far. Are you on a three shot? No. And Are you the voice and, of God? I have to tell you, your beak is a little, little. Uh, <laughs> it's so I can see. Your, 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 your. Yeah. I can't see. I, I was going to say like something that would get me into all kinds of trouble. Muck, muck, but you got to do muck, something muck, with your beak. Beak. Muck. Muck. There we go. And you got your little, your little thing. And do the chicken? <laughs> you're going to finish your thought. The chickens fly. The deviled egg wants to know. Uh, so I had to chase a chicken up into a tree in Haiti once. So yes, oh, they wow. do fly, at least in uh, short spurts. I got a follow-up question for you. Judah, will the deviled egg be fodder on the meme accounts in his deviled egg costume? Oh, I, I, I got to tell you, that deviled egg costume suits you well. I very, I very much like being the deviled egg. Uh, yeah, well, we, very mischievous. So we got to tell the story about how, this, how we decided which was going to be which. I, we, oh, we, we cut a deck of cards. We cut a deck of cards. Yeah, and you immediately drew the ace of spades. I immediately drew the Interestingly, ace. Interestingly, he provided the deck of cards and had the ace of spades perhaps jerry-rigged, pun intended. Those are the deck of cards that my wife and I play cards with every weekend. Canasta. And I, and I canasta. And I repetitively lose. You so do you, not win? Well, you won not. that one with an ace of spades. Uh, well, I mean, I, that, that was about as lucky as I could get. I pulled an ace of spades out of the top of the split on the deck. Keith Smith, first quarter of next year, does the market still stay stuck in quicksand? No. First quarter of next year, you're saying the market does no. not stay? No. No. Interesting. And, and I, I'm, I'm going to lean on historical data. And while you're talking... Because uh, I didn't do any slides. You're going to look up uh, what the first quarter after elections no, is like. I'm going to send a slide off to Judah, so he can post it for everybody. But Judah's doing a deviled egg on a yeah, hard-boiled yeah, yeah, egg. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> He's doing a deviled egg's face on a hard-boiled egg. You know what? He'll 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 do fine. Okay. But there's it's the a, same guy that asked me what you want me to draw on the hard-boiled egg. There. <laughs> Okay. I do love him. I do love him. <laughs> there is there. Then there is that. So um, I am going to, if you can chat for a minute while he's doing that, I've got to take this one little egg, one little egg, this slide, one little slide. And send it over to him. I'm going to, I'm going to send This is the question we're asking. And I promise I'm going to ask Keith about that Belmont listing we talked about yesterday. Or was it two days ago? Excuse me. Two days ago. On the I Love Sebo show. Did you see what we talked about on the I, I Love Sebo show? not. Uh, $632,000 so, asking price yeah. for our 1309 Belmont Park. You may want to look up that address. I will as soon as I get my pen back from the other chicken. Oh, uh, 632. Right. I will you know, get Judy, you a You know, you got to pick up the pace a little bit, brother. Uh, I'm just <laughs> telling you. Third oh, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. We need that deviled egg. get you in the eye. <laughs> I can get you a red pen. Judah. Judah. Wait, did you already finish it? No, 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 I can barely see. Just, can you just hand that to me? Oh, you're a very talented artiste. Oh, that is a devil. Look at that. He drew a devil on the deviled egg right there. On the hard-boiled egg. Hold it out further. Is that good? Eh. Eh. Hold it out. Like right there? You know, but yeah, that thing okay. is... I mean, it's extremely detailed. Is that good? Can't really see it? Tilt it down. Boy, come and on, To now. the left a little bit. There we go. All right, 1309 <laughs> Belmont Park, 632 well, hold asking on, hold, price. Hold on a second, because I want to talk about this slide that I just sent. 1309 Belmont. Belmont right? Park, 632 asking Got price. Got it. One bedroom, one bathroom. Got it. 1,000 square feet. Judah, I emailed that to you. The home is 84 right. years old on a .21 lot, and they're asking 632K. Guess what it has? 
uh, a house. I don't know. I yeah. got I'm, upzoning potential. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's a tear down. Yeah, 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 Legit yeah. tear down. What's the price on six six hundred and thirty-two thousand yeah. dollars? What's it? I, I haven't for an eighty-two-year-old, eighty-four-year-old house. Which which zoning is it? Uh, I could tell you. I should know that. We talked about it. Judy, were you able to get that? Yeah, I'm think of CX. Download it now. Got it. I'll tell you in five seconds here. So this particular and it's next to the park. Charles McDonald of Pros Pro has the listing. I'm trying, I, and I made sure to give him, you know, some props there. I'm not I'll, throwing will, shade on the agent. CX3. I will. CX3. CX3. Yeah, yeah. So you can do a lot with CX3. I, do it. I, I, I don't know it off the top of my head. It's, but uh, we can surely look it up. But it can surely get done. Here's the downside to this. Our good friend Robert. You know, Robert Liberty. No, uh, Robert Boyd. Come on, you can help me out. Uh, rezoning. Come on. Robert rezoning. Who's Robert rezoning? It's okay. I, I'll Who get, is Robert rezoning? Give me a minute. Give me a minute. I'm trying to study the slide I sent him. So is Robert turn. rezoning his last name? Robert rezoning his name. It's kind of like Chicken Smith. But <laughs> you're having a senior moment. I'm having a total. Sarah senior. Hill Buchensky, Ali Tucker, welcome to the program. Jehu Martin, welcome to the program. Roger Voisine, we need to get you back on it's here. It's Roger who I meant to say. There you go. Okay, Roger right. Voisine? Roger, Roger. Okay, Thank so you. not Robert Rizzoni. Not Robert Rizzoni. You meant Roger Voisine. That's what I meant. Okay, to got say. it. Okay. Got it. I, just... I, I can see how you can confuse Roger Voisine with Robert no, Rizzoni. Can't. Okay. <laughs> no, you can't. No, you so can't. I'm just trying to. <laughs> no, and I speak Smith. This is a total Smith moment. Okay. But here's the reality of it that is probably a textbook project that meets the requirements or meets everything that's outlined in the rezoning. Okay. And we are now, I don't know how many months. 10 into, months. 10 months into it. And not much has happened. And we really, at best of my knowledge, and he can chime in, we are not moving the needle any further. We had it's a actually, project on Barracks Road. And it's a... Behind the CVS where uh, Anderson Seafood used to be. And then we had the brownstones being built in Lewis Mountain that haven't cracked ground in place of an older rancher. 800,000 plus transaction that happened in June on Alderman Road. So can we talk about this slide real quick? We can talk we... about the slide. Yeah, so were you able to get that up, my friend? Thank you. It's showing. So what you're looking at is the monthly comparison of active homes versus homes under contract from 2017 to 24. So those yellow arrows represent January through, you know, through the second quarter, right? So if you take a look at the ones that got black around it, those are just after elections. Take a look at the election of 20, uh, from January 21, right after the 20 election. That's probably the steepest climb. Okay. That was the unicorn years, right? This was COVID and all that stuff. But every one of the Januaries through the end of the second quarter was um, the black is, is um, the black bars or contract pendings climbed up. So I, I anticipate you're probably going to have that type of thing. The volume is going to be somewhere around 23, the beginning of this year. I don't, you're not going to see a 2021 volume. You also take a look at the far left, that orange up there, yeah. those are active listings. Look at the delta between the two. You're not gonna, if we're starting to climb a little bit, a little bit more listings than, than pendings. I actually think the first quarter of next year, you're gonna see that number reverse. I think you're gonna see actives being a little bit little bit less than pendings again. But we're gonna stay at this lower level, this 500, 600 level bouncing up. We are not gonna be getting up to you know, 15, 16, 1800 list, uh, listings like we did in Je you know, the, the January, the first quarter of 17 or the first quarter of 18 or even the first quarter of 19. Well, I like that, that answered the that question? That was a very succinct take. Yeah, so I did this for our little uh, office group on what, it, what you know when we reviewed on what was we're projecting for the next year how's we got some of your your office colleagues watching yep. how's the how's the mood in the office we're, we're doing great so the look in the unicorn years when to use Jonas quote when a turkey, turkey could fly in the wind that means anybody really could have done this business okay two years ago we started working on the basics okay right the fundamentals of the business relationships you know understanding the market Every one of our people are doing great. Thank God. Good job, Yes Realty Partners. Other than this guy named Keith, but other Keith's than doing that, great. Yeah. So um, yeah. So I'm following, I'm following a couple of listings that I want to see moved over there. Yes. He's doing very good. Yeah, yeah. Well, that is back to 
when you have a listing like that and it's a showing and you ask the other side, tell me about what your client's thinking and all that great stuff, you get, I don't know, they're just not ready. Okay. Um, and I, I, it's just this weird thing. I just don't, I, I don't think we saw this at the run up to 20, right? I, I just, it's just this, we just, I can't think of any other word to use. But weird. Then it's weird. Okay. It's weird. And so we just got to stay on top of it. We got to stay, communicate with our folks, both buyers and sellers. Be uber transparent about everything. <laughs> You're laughing. And, and, and we'll get through this. This is, I, I think this is the new normal. I, I don't, you know, we're not going to see unicorn. We're not going to see time of great unpleasantness. What we're going to see is a lot of people working hard to do their thing. I think, um, you know, it used to be not uncommon to work years with buyers. Years? Years, absolutely. That was the normal thing, to find something or whatever. Same thing with sellers, to get them ready to go on the market. So we're kind of, I want to say we're kind of back to normal. That's kind of my, my read. So you want to highlight your take on Belmont Park? I have to look at it first because I haven't looked at it, so I have to get in. CX3 zoning, Smith. I know it. Right next to a park, we well, got a somebody, tear down. Somebody house. needs to look up what C, what the, what the, um, what the uh, C X three zoning <laughs> Charlottesville. I'll but, look that up for you. Yeah, so I got it. Thank you. What do you got over there? I'm looking at it. Yeah, not a lot of information in the listing. Well, I mean, it's a tear down. The thing yeah. that matters is the C X three zoning. You're not going to pay six hundred thirty two thousand dollars to live in that house. Yeah. Interesting. It, it has um, some opens uh, close to a par Belmont Park. Yeah. So if you take a look at it at the at the thing uh, to as you're looking to the left of it, there's actually a right of way for an actual road. I don't know. Mm -hmm. if you saw I saw that. that. You saw that in there. He where, highlights it. Yeah, where you could. Well, it's going to be hard to get to because one of the lots actually large double lot. Well. No, the sec the next That's to what it he is, says in the copy in the well, listing. Um, I'm looking at it right now. The lot next to lot lot to the left of it um, is, according to the GIS, is not owned by this property owner. But I, it could be wrong once you go through the title, the title work on it. Look, uh, it, it's it's a um, Judy. You still got those photos, don't you? Yeah. So of the Belmont listing, yeah. you can put on screen. Uh, so fine. this has got a lot of people talking yeah. in this community. Yeah. So here's the struggle with it. Remember when the zone this time last year, right? When it got approved, what was my biggest concern? Not the zoning. What was my biggest concern? Wahoo eighty nine says, "Are these the new uniforms for UVA's offensive line?" Yeah. <laughs> uh, your concern. You had a lot of concerns. Of yeah. So my concerns was the second half of this, the site plan side of it. That's what really dictates how this is going to go. This is why Rogers stuck where Roger is stuck. And when the city made the decision, however it made it, and it can change it, made the decision anything over three is required to a major site plan. So Put that in perspective, what that means. So, for instance, anything over 6,000 square feet of dis disturbed soil, which this will clearly be, requires a full erosion control plan. It's usually, usually expensive. So, you know, you, so two things could happen here. They could take the path of least resistance. Yeah, and what right, do? Buy it, tear it down, sub subdivide it into three units, yeah. right? You won't keep the, keep the disturbance less than 6,000 feet, which is gonna be impossible <laughs> to do. How do you do that? You go vertical. On a point two one acres, you, you go vertical. You have to, okay, so you go vertical. You're going to build uh, yeah, you do like condos. A, condos, yeah. Condos, one three. over one, or okay, one over two, or one, this, one, one, one. This two. new zoning ordinance is a train wreck. It's not the ordinance that's okay. A train. It's not the ordinance that needs help. All so let's do a little little zoning one on one class. Oh, all the zoning does it says what you can do with it. Okay, as far as density, product type so forth and so on. I'm with you. Where the rubber really meets the road is the subdivision ordinance or the, or the subdivision side of it. That's where all the details get into it. That's where why 
homes are, and I think you're going to see a third, 25% this year. I think next year you're going to see some third new construction as to regulatory requirements. Here's a prime example. I, if I'm disturbing more than 6,000 square feet, I've got to do a full-blown erosion and control plan on a tiny little lot, which is going to be extremely expensive, probably going to require some underground storage to go ahead and do it, which is extremely expensive, and nobody's going to do that. Now, if they would have said six, right, we, or change the 6,000 or do some sort of caveat to that, then something might actually happen to here. More than likely... You know, unless somebody's willing to go through all the brain damage, all the expense, Roger, Roger owns the land. Can you imagine if, if it was something I had to buy it like this and then sit on this? And carry some the, debt? The carrying cost. I was telling my father this on the way back. Um, when I did the acres at Lake Monticello, from the time I put a contract in, rezoned it, and put a bulldozer on the job site for six months. It was a complete rezoning, erosion control plan, everything like that. You've got Roger that is almost a year, and he already owns it, and the zoning's already there, yeah. which is telling me that the approval process has, is broken. Um, so, I, I, look, I think from my perspective, you know, the expense to put something on a 0.21 acre lot is going to be extremely expensive. Well, this is this is your bailiwick here. This is I, what I, he does. I, I know this well. Right? Yeah. I just I don't I don't see it happening. You would have to I, I if they bumped the 3 to 6 and and made 6 as a minor Subdivision plan and anything over six was major, right? Tweaked some of the erosion control. The freaking um, the the bonding on this would be off the charts. Oh, by the way, land trust 2019 built houses in it. I still don't have my bonding money back. How is that possible? How is that sincerely possible? So what happens is is you answer a bunch of questions, you provide the information. Then more questions happen. People leave. You have to go back. I talked about this at the Land Trust Executive Committee meeting yesterday. Um, in Portland and Seattle, one of the reasons they're successful at actually producing stuff, um, and some people might not like this, but the way they're able to get more affordable housing built is if you check all the affordable housing boxes, there's a streamlined process. I think there should be a streamlined process, period. But what they do out there is they streamline it. They streamline it. If you check the boxes, there's a... This is what put Judah's, develop, Judah's father's development firm out of business. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, sure. It, it's ultimately what put me out of business. But it cost me $17 million. Because I put a piece of... Uh, the property that we put a contract in in Nahor Village was in 2003. I didn't get it rezoned and approved and site plan approved, which actually in today's standards was fast. Um, in about 2006. And the market changed. Started the one-year construction in 2006, finished it in about mid-2007, you know, the infrastructure and all that stuff, and guess what happened? The market change. If I would have gone through that in a six-month process and started in the middle of 2003, I would have not lost everything. You would have been good. I would have not lost everything. Now, I've talked about this all the time. It turned out to be a blessing. I got to do things that I would have not have been able to do, but do that. But I would have not had to go through three years of heartache, stress on a marriage, stress on a relationship, stress on everything, um, if that project was approved in three to six months. Instead, it took, that took three to four years. Now it's six to eight years to go ahead and do it. Back to, back to this 5% and all this stuff, Oh man! All you, all and the and and what Albemarle County and and I love Ned to death and all those guys and they're doing a great job. They're doing the best they can. All you got to do is take a look at where the money's going and where the builders are going. Nobody, and trust me, I know this. Nobody wants to do a development in Albemarle County. Where are they going? Green County. Hmm. There's a lot in Richmond. Look, they're going to Richmond. Yeah. They're going. They're going to uh, Virginia Beach. Yep. They're going to the other side of the mountain. Seen a boatload in Richmond. 
and Richmond is exploding. Yeah. Out that way. A lot of Stanley Martin in Richmond. A lot of Stanley Martin in Richmond. Um, and it's not Richmond proper. It's some of the surrounding, yeah. surrounding, yeah. surrounding counties. That, that, that's where it's going to go. So if you're taking a look at just locally where the development and building is going, we used to talk about Zion's Crossroads, was it? And we talked about this a, a bunch of times. It is now Green County. Green so, County, regardless of water and sewer, because they'll figure this, they'll, they'll have to figure this out, and they will. As long as, as long as everybody sits around the table and acts like adults, I think I, I think I just said that. I think that was a little little jab at one of the supervisors. It was a jab at the process. Okay, one and of the supervisors. If everybody sits around and acts like adults and look at the data, the real data, this particular supervisor thinks that there's not going to be any more than 48 homes or something like that. Also does development in the in Charlottesville. And um, all you got to do is what I did is pick up the phone and call every one of the four big builders and go, what's your production expectations in 25, 26, and 27? And they tell you that number is about 225 to 250. So they're going to be building somewhere around 225 to 250 units a year. You do the math with the connection fees. That's how you pay for this, right? You pick up the phone and you go, hey, Mr. Developer, do me a favor. We'll credit you $15,000 if you spend the money up front to put the infrastructure in now because we can't wait five years to do it. And the developer will go, sure, no problem. I'll put it in the ground, and I'll put it in the ground cheaper than you can put it in the ground, faster than you can put it in the ground. And all I'm asking for is when I go for my connection fee, you waive the connection fee. And anybody who's a business person will go, okay, you can go ahead and do that. The problem is... Nobody wants a developer to do that because they don't trust them. The developer doesn't. It becomes this whole. That's a master class from the chicken. Yeah, chick that was quack excellent. quack. You... A lot of people giving us props on the costume. Thank, Thank you for you. the. Uh, Thank you. What time is it? Costumes that we're seeing Ooh. here. Thank you for the comments on our costumes. What was the best costume you saw in your trick or treating last night? Oh, Baby Ravenna. What was Baby Ravenna? Don't ask me that question. What was her costume? Uh, I think she was like some sort of '80s. Disco kind of. She's an '80s disco. Yeah, gal. she had. Good for her. I think she was like glitter and glasses and dancing because oh. she loves to dance. So I think she was doing. Was that. she able to do a lot of walking, or did you bring the wagon? No, 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 no. This this kid is, this kid is built like Yvonne and Houston. They're pretty athletic people. She'll, okay. She'll walk. Yeah, it's funny. She uh, she got in front of everybody and called her entourage along. And there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good. A lot of fun. We. We, 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 uh, what did you think of the chicken costume? Um, like I said, the first thing was, um, like, who the hell is this weirdo? She knew it was you. Uh, well, I, I had the sunglasses uh, on and you had your stuff like that, so, so I don't think she really realized um, who it was. But look, you know, chicken or egg, I mean, this is going to be the, to the end of time. What comes first? You know, if you go ahead, if the jurisdiction says we're going to build all this infrastructure and nobody comes, who goes ahead and pays for it? Fulvana County is a prime example of this, by the way. Um, they built a high school, which is, has diminishing student thing, a yeah. $72 million house. And they're about, depending on how you talk to, 20 to $30 million into a in water infrastructure project from the James to, to Louisa. But they still don't have water going in. That's been going on forever. So there's a bill out there. There's a there's an invoice out there. There's a fee out there that my taxes have to pay uh, for a brand new high school and a water system that the school system is having less kids in, according to them, less kids in. And I got an infra water infrastructure system that is absolutely needed for us to grow that don't have water in it yet. And don't forget, you have uh, a lot of that business taxes to help offset the, the overhead you're accruing. Yeah, what is it, like a whopping 3% or 6%, 7%? I don't know what the hell it is. I think we're like 97% residential. So here's the point. If you, if, you, if, you don't get the, if you don't get the water, you don't get the industry, which the industry is not going to come because there's no place for them to live in there, all I'm going to do is end up spending more money on my taxes and get less services, by the way. There you go. The chicken. The Master chicken. Master class from you. You were on point today. I don't know about that. It was the coffee. They were on point. Buck, buck. And the rum. Uh, yeah. I have to uh, get some more.
Hey, time, hey, time to get some You're work. going. So you're going to wear that at your noon show? I may wear that on the noon show. <laughs> Judah Wickhauer would have to be the chicken on there. I don't think he's a I didn't make you laugh today. You did make me laugh today. Uh, I laughed. You laughed earlier I'm, today. I'm feeling, but the, I'm feeling that laugh comfy on here. Friday, when your head almost, last Friday, your head almost bounced off the oh. thing. I've been thinking about that. That was, that was a, you know, people give you and I a hard time sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Right? I mean, we're in front of a lot of people giving our opinions. It's part of it. And you know what opinions are like. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, uh, but anybody really wants to know who you are, Watch that thirty seconds that you just you've just uncontrollably lost. Yeah, I mean the the and and like you the the thing is it really doesn't matter to me. Well, it does. You, it, I'm, I'm, it, it, I'm, I know I'm, you well uh, enough. That's not true. I know you well enough to know it doesn't it doesn't change who you are. Yeah, this right. is who I am. No matter what, it don't change who you are. Um, and we're not people pleasers. We're we're honest brokers. We're who we are. We are we are who we are. Yeah. Um, you know, we're not yes people. I had that conversation yesterday at my desk. Judah was involved in that meeting with some, a prospective client. Some and people, you know what he said? I find your um, straightforwardness refreshing. Yeah. And then he signed the contract. I can't tell you how many deals we do. So then sign the contract. How many deals we do? That and shout out to Michael Guthrie. I use this line: "Do I have permission to be honest with you?" And they said they wish you would. And you know, I've walked people away. I said, "This is not the right property for you. Yeah, this is not the right deal for you, right?" Um, I've got a text right now that I'm going to have to call somebody after this to tell them that same thing, because this isn't the right project. Even though they think it is, this is not the right property. And that takes a little bit of cojones yeah. to go ahead and do it. But um, you know, look, I, I, I meant what I said. When you lost it and laughed, it, was, it made my day. Well, thank you, Keith Smith. Keith Smith, uh, the chicken, Judah Wickhauer, the chicken, yours truly, the devil dang. Real Talk with Keith Smith, archived online at realtalkwithkeithsmith.com. Click the Partners tab and support the trusted without them, buyers. But, but without, without those folks on the Partner tab, we can't be stupid. I mean, we can't do what we do. Partners tab on Real Talk with Keith Smith. The I Love Siebel show is up at 12.30 p.m. where we have a boatload to cover. Thank boat you load. kindly for joining us. So long, everybody. I said thank you, Smith. Yeah, thank you. I am sweating like a stuck.